Sims, and we are back with more Lover Pretend. Oh, look! Asagi's right there. We're going to start his route today. Are you excited? I am. It's also been, like, weeks since I played. Did I? Oh, my motherfucking God. I did not miss my computer being a douchebag and upping the sound. I just turned it down, and no lie, it went all the way up to, like, 80. I'm like, I turned you down for a reason. I do not understand why my computer, when I plug my headphones in, is like, fuck you, we will set it at 50, and you better deal with it. I don't, I don't know why, but anyway, it's been weeks, because, you know, I take breaks in between each route, but I also have not recorded anything in a week and a half, and I have, like, six days to record as much as possible, because then I won't be able to record again for, like, a week. So, this is fun. No, don't you dare. Okay, so anyway, we're just going to jump right in, because, yes, we're going to use the same name. We're going to do a lot of skipping in this, but that's okay. Prologue can be skipped. Skip. Skip. How about if I select it? Oh, wait. It said prologue. <gasps> Whoops. Wait. So that is the prologue. Wait a minute, what? Anyway. There's our beautiful future boyfriend. I feel alive again. The sweetness of the dissolved sugar in my hot coffee permeated my tired brain. Oh, it must be like, because it's like, we know we know where you are. You've done all the other routes. Interesting. We went over the finer details of the script and I took copious notes. Then I decided to ask a question that had been nagging at me. Oh, I swear to God, if Norton doesn't leave me the motherfucking hell alone. Don't show me again, Norton. Go away. You know what I love, Norton? Don't show me again, Norton. I don't want to do my smart scan right now. What does it do? Brings up the fucking thing to do a smart scan. I said don't fucking show me again. It's going to show me again. It keeps like, you should do a backup. You want me to backup? I back up my own shit, Norton? Fuck off. And every single time, do not show me this again. What happens? It comes up again. I swear to God, Norton. You're kind of a pain in my motherfucking ass. Could you not bother me while I'm trying to do shit? It's taken me, like, 30 minutes to just, like, get everything hooked up and do it because then, of course, everything needs to update. And then my thing, my, at least I saw my graphics card needed to be updated so that, you know. But this will still break halfway through recording anyway, so, like, oh, my God. I swear to God. You know, you get, you're gone for, like, a week and a half and you're like, we can finally record again. I don't remember anything. And my computer is like, let's just fucking fuck up everything while in the... In the meantime, I'm like, are you trying to do something? Screw you. I swear to God, I'm going to yeet it across the planet. Oh my God. Guys. I'm sorry, I'll stop. Anyway. Um, are there any genres you struggle with, Professor? It feels... I can't remember if we've had this conversation with him before because it's been eight years. <clears throat> right. He's got the accent. Okay. As I've forgotten everything. It has been a week and a half since I've recorded anything. And, like, at least another week or so for the... It's been, like, at least three weeks, probably, since I've recorded this. So I remember nothing. You know, if it's been two days, I remember nothing, so... Three weeks. Of course. But just between you and me, I'm not very good with romance or family-oriented stories. Oh, God, is this where we find out that we're you're my brother and then we have to have a romance? Because I'm actually okay with that now, because I've played too many of these games, and... Again, I'm depraved now. <laughs> really? I never would have guessed that about you. What do you do when you run into a scene you're having trouble writing? Asagi took a sip of his coffee, smiling as if he'd anticipated my question. I've got my own ways of dealing with it, but it might not be very helpful to you. You and I are two completely different kinds of writers. Different in what way? I'd say that screenwriters fall roughly into two categories. Those who write based on logic, and those who write based on emotion. So let me ask you a question. Which one do you think I am? Probably the logical one, right? I was startled by the sudden question. To me, he writes with his feelings. He's a logical writer. Obviously, we're the one who writes with our feelings. That was kind of obvious. He's like, there's the smart people, and then there's the emotional people. Listen, I can be emotional and logical at the same time. Just because sometimes my emotions are illogical. 
rude of you. <laughs> um. And yes, he's a logical writer. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. That absolutely makes sense. Having read your scripts, I'd say you're more of a logical writer. You provide very clear stage directions, and there's an apparent flow to the plot. Most of all, your lectures are easy to understand. I doubt your work would be so clean if you worked off feelings alone. <laughs> well, that's correct. And nothing makes me happier than to be praised for the literary quality of my writing. But it sure feels nice to hear someone compliment my teaching style. After a pensive silence, Professor Asagi suddenly gulped down the rest of his coffee. On that note, I happen to be a strictly logical writer. You, on the other hand, write from a place of emotion. One isn't necessarily better than the other. They just turn out different results, you know what I mean? In fact, if a talented writer like you can connect with your characters, you should be able to create something pretty impressive. You're right, of course. So I think the reason you struggle this time around is probably... Professor Asagi paused and eyed me warily as if grappling for the right words. I could guess what he'd been about to say and nodded bitterly. You're saying that I struggle to write romance because I don't have any experience. Teach me, Professor. <laughs> Did you think we were going to get away with not saying things like that in the first, like, ten minutes? Your words, not mine. Isn't that the same as agreeing with me? That said... Plenty of writers can write romance without having actual experience. People write murder mysteries without being murderers themselves, you know. And that's all I'm saying. Right, I know that. But that's why I'm having a hard time understanding why I couldn't make it work in this one. I'll think of it this way. And maybe I have too many preconceptions of what romance is. And that holds you back. Really? Not like I have any romantic fantasies I was trying to shoehorn in. Anyway, all creators run into walls from time to time. That's just part of the process. Well, this is a good chance to take some time and think it over. If you can conquer this, you'll gain even more depth the, as a writer. Y yes, sir. I'll do my best. Thank you. Okay. Look at that. It was the perfect time. I hit skip and I at the perfect time. I was like, somewhere around here, we're going to probably go back to what we've already seen. Pretend time! Uh, yes, all answers correct. Right. We know how to do this. Do we? I don't. Oh, Aww, Kazuma. I do miss you. You're precious. He was a good best friend love interest character. I'm not gonna lie. Love him to death. And Riku. I, you know, this game has been great. I'm actually like, I love all of our love interests. Makino does look better five years later. Like, there's just something about that that just, it's like, okay, I'm gonna need, but I still loved his character, you know what I mean? Nope, 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 nope. Why can't I skip the fucking intro all of a sudden? Was this the game that you could never skip the intro? <laughs> I get very confused with ones that I can't skip the intro and ones I can't skip the credits. Was this the one that you can't do either? Actually, yeah, you can't skip the credits on this one. Again, it makes sense when it's like the first, like, when you finish the good ending because it's all the pictures from that but i don't remember not being able to skip the opening credits you know what i mean which is very bizarre it's on it's just because of the copyrighted music so then i have to be like fuck and like reach over and turn it down to make sure like we're not getting slapped in the face like listen um I got nothing. I got nothing to fill in the gap here. There's never, like, when it's stuff like this, you're like, I could have things to talk about. I don't. I really don't. I wish you could jam out to the song, but you can't, because I actually don't remember which game it was. Most of them, it's like, okay, they just take any monetization, so have fun with that 10 cents. Um... But there was one that I had to go back and re-edit the video to completely take it out because the song was like, you cannot upload that. And I was like, okay. Luckily, it didn't count as like a copyright strike or anything. It's just like, yeah, no, you can't publish this. And it's like, um, all right. 
So I'll just re-edit and take the song out? I feel like it was Bad Apple Wars. I don't know why I'm getting that, like, thing. But anyway. Sorry, bird. Uh, my bird is with me. Again. Because he's very clingy. Not that he hasn't seen me in a week. He was with me. He was just stuck in his cage. You know what I mean? So now he's very happy to be home. Um, okay, so we've already done this. I'd appreciate that. I'd appreciate that. Yada, yada, yada shit happening. <laughs> oh, and Hanai are not dead. He should have been. <laughs> You're really pretty. Oh, yeah, no, that's exactly what we say to him. Yeah, okay. We don't need to read that. Alright, and then, okay. I'm just scrolling up. I like to try to make our choices. And then, like, all answers correct. I'm assuming that's what we were supposed to do with pretend time. You know what I mean? I like to be like, let's see if I can decide what the right choice would be without using the guide, and then check the guide. You know what I mean? We use you know what I'm saying? That didn't make any damn sense. Like, I want to be like, oh, uh, I'm going to guess we say no one in particular for this one. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Um, to this, it doesn't matter. But when there's Asagi-specific questions, I want to, like, be like, I think you prefer that. Like, the literary writer one, you know? I'm going to say not really, right? Yeah. Okay. That's the wrong answer for Kazuma. Therefore, it would be the right answer for Asagi. Uh, oh. Please stop, probably. Oh, wait, did he like that? Oh, yeah, it's politely the kind. He liked it when we basically told him off. We were like, I'm gonna punch you in the nuts, and he's like, take it off on that. So, you know. <laughs> kind of forgot. All answers correct. There's gonna be a pretend time where I don't have to do all answers correct, and I'm gonna fuck it up, because I'm gonna assume. <laughs> um, yeah, right. We do the Yukito pretend time. Okay, all answers correct for this, too. Do, do, do. Okay. All right. Okay. Let him sleep. I saw that one. And again, waking him up was the right answer for him. I can remember things on occasion. Not a lot, but some things. Right, Burb? Is my snugs. It's very chilly up here, actually. It's kind of cold. So he's like fucked up and snug to get. He's keeping half of my chin warm. Um. Oh. Oh. There's a next. Ah! Ask Professor Sagi for help. This is new. I was nearly at my wit's end. The Shijima and Makino had already slipped out of the room. What was I gonna do? Only one other person could save me now. Professor Asagi! By some miracle, my mentor met my eyes and gave me a wry smile. It was a look of resignation. A moment, Miss Ueda. I need to speak to you about the script. Absolutely! Ah, oh, she's gone! A way to scare her off, dummy Kubo. Dummy Kubo. You're the one who's scaring her off. Don't care. Can't hear them. Definitely can't hear them. I did my best to ignore the squabbling duo while my mentor was smiling at them. I'm glad they're becoming such good friends. Are they? That was all I could say to my mentor, whose serene, kindly smile seemed better aimed at young children at play. <gasps> I'm sorry. That is a long sentence, and I didn't take a breath. You'd think I'd learn by now, but, like, no. You're gonna do the same dumbass mistakes over and over. Nope, oh, no, it's still in them. Okay. Here, Miss Ueda. I accepted a can of juice from my mentor and bowed apologetically. I'm so sorry. Not only did you help get me out of there, but you're even treating me. I don't need to apologize. I know how much work you're putting into this every day. Just consider it a gesture of thanks from me to you. I'm happy to know that he appreciates me. Seeing that gave me a boost, a little boost of confidence. Seeing that gave me a little boost of confidence. Yeah, okay, there. You mean the script we just left? Oh, the. Wait. 
You mean the scene we just left? I can read. No, I can't. What was comforting about that? Back in that room, you looked like you were having a good time. How should I put it? You looked much livelier than you ever have at school. Did? Guess I wasn't paying attention. Even if you find it hard to believe now, you'll look back on these moments fondly someday. Besides, you're aware of how valuable this experience is, aren't you? I... yes. I've learned so much watching the actors work and how they're cast. I can see firsthand how much effort the pros put into understanding and mastering their roles, but... But... To be honest, interacting with Sena gets a little tiring. In fact, out of everyone here, he probably sucks the most, of the most energy out of me. In contrast to my frown, my mentor's grin grew wider. I'll admit he isn't as guarded around others as most people. It seems more like he goes on the attack. Well, that must be his unique way of communicating with other people. Or women, because he's, like, just into ladies, so, like... He's like, hey, baby. I'm sure it's a little perturbing how close he's willing to get. I understand that, but... It might not be a bad idea to take him up on his advances. What?! Trying to push me off on Yukito? Huh. You haven't realized that you're in love with me because it's a kind of an inappropriate relationship if you think about it, but... You think it'd be a good experience for you? What do you think? What am I supposed to say to that? As I contemplated how to respond, my mentor waited with a look of bemusement. My answer was... What's charming about saying it? As in, romantic experience? Okay, here's the interesting... <laughs> I like the, what's charming about him? Like, you go ahead and tell me what the hell's so charming about this bastard, right? But I do think the, as in, romantic experience is interesting because, like, okay, think about it. So you're sitting there talking to some guy. Okay, now we're going to romance Asagi. We know this. I don't know if he's into us right now. So, like, and obviously we're going to have to pretend we're dating him for a while and then you fall in love. So, like, whatever. But... In a, the context of, like, we're supposed to date him eventually, if he's like, oh, you should, yeah, no, get to know him, and you're like, in a romantic way? Wait, what? No, no, no. That would kind of be, like, almost that little spur that kind of kicks in for them to be like, no, not like that, so that they realize that they don't want you to go talk to another man in a romantic way, because that would make them jealous. I don't think he's at that stage, so I don't think that that would have the intended effect of, like, when I read this, I'm like, huh... I want it to have that effect. I don't think it would right now. Um, but I am curious to what his reaction would be to this one. I don't know. They're both good. Like, what's charming about him? Like, we're just having a casual, like, uh, you want me to romance the pants off this man? And be like, um, wait, what? I kind of hope it's in a romantic experience one, because I kind of want to see how he reacts to that. Like... You know, instead of being like, yeah, why not? You know, you know, he'd probably be like, um, like, sorry, what? Hmm. Uh, hold on. Yeah, as, <laughs> yes, I really want to see what this one is. Um, are you referring to the romance plot I struggled to write? Huh? Back then, you pointed out that my lack of relationship experience influenced my work. So are you suggesting that I go out and test the waters in order to learn how to write romance? Could you imagine having this conversation with your professor who you're going to romance later? He's like, are you telling me to go have sex with him? <laughs> Not quite that extreme, but still, he's like, uh, wait, what? Well, weird, weird conversation. Before I knew it, I was clenching my fists. For an instant, my mentor's eyes widened. <laughs> this man did not just laugh at me. Oh, pardon me. I could not help it. You're just so earnest when it comes to screenwriting. Was there something funny about my question? Not at all. Actually, I appreciate that my dear student has taken my advice to heart. However, well, that's not exactly what I was referring to. My mentor's cryptic smile was a puzzle I couldn't solve. He's over there like, I'm glad you don't want to romance him. Maybe my sister. If he turns out to be our brother, I'm going to be very disappointed because I want to romance this man. You can't do that to me. If I guessed incorrectly, then what did he mean? 
Professor Osaki faced me directly. Perhaps he sensed my growing confusion. <gasps> Stop it! You can't give me such a beautiful CG! Put his glasses on and it'd be like... Ten times hotter. But he is beautiful. Stop it! CGs in this game are really good, aren't they? Man. I forgot how much I missed this. Although, good God, it's kind of hard to read that text right now. Jesus. To put it simply, I don't mind if you forget about our talk regarding romance. At least for now. Yeah, because he doesn't want me to romance anyone. I get it. I see what... Yeah, this is... Hey, actually, this... That conversation point... That whole choice was is kind of having the effect I wanted it to have. Very subtly, very deep down, but that's all I was looking for. Huh? All well, I'm trying to say is that wisdom and experience come from throwing yourself into subjects and environments that challenge you. Sure, you may not get along with Sena, but if someone makes you feel that way, it's because their sensibilities are different than yours. Oh. Well, that certainly applies, applies to him, wouldn't you say? Yes, I think so. God, is he so beautiful? It's just that little charming little smile, that little smirk that's just so soft and delicate. I just love it. Oh, look at us look sitting there with him. We look so precious. He definitely does look, like, older than us. But, like, not in the, like, the way that typical games do it, where they're like, are you over 30? Dead. Excuse me? He's 29! He might as well retire! Now he's about to die! Rude anime logic. It's very rude. Like the Crypt Keeper, according to anime logic. I don't like that! Okay! <laughs> but, like, they definitely do. Like, she definitely does look young, and he definitely does have something like a slightly more mature aspect. I don't know what it is. I mean, they did a good job with that, I would say. Like, he does have that slightly more mature than us look, but not in the holy fucking shit, he's dead because he's like 30. Or. Actually, I don't know. When it went through in the title, how old did it say he was? I mean, I'm guessing he's at least late 20s, maybe to 30. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Anyway, I saw the world one way and Sena another. Our perspectives were probably completely different. I know nothing about Sano's world. Even though it's a brisk chat, you should try talking to someone who thinks differently than you. But that alone will broaden your horizons. And before you know it, it'll influence your writing, and you'll be able to write a deeper story than ever before. With that in mind, his offers don't sound so bad, do they? On my own time, I had devoured countless movies, books, and TV shows. When it came to media, I tried a little bit of everything without being picky. But I never thought about applying that same idea to people I don't see eye to eye with. That's fine to take it slow at first, as long as you can come to understand the other person's worldview. I found myself smiling and nodding. My mentor's kind advice had soothed me. It's also his beautiful goddamn face. Alright, I'm a little bit interested now. That's the spirit. I'm looking forward to your next script. Don't leave me. Opening up to someone I couldn't stand would expand my view of the world. Also, it's like, it's Kasena so, like, over the top, but it's like, it's kind of cute. She's like, I can't stand him. And it's like, aww, but he's adorable stuff. Once you get to know him, you realize that that, like, you know, there's more to him than that, but. I've never even thought to do that before. As I was lost in thought. Hey, Professor and the Little Missy. All done with your private lecture? Hi, he's dropping us in poor taste. Well, what else was I supposed to do? Far be it for me to interrupt such a serious conversation. I'm a master of etiquette. I fucking love Hanai so much. <laughs> I love him so much. It's hardly polite when you go boasting about it. Anyway, Ichiro, if you show off that much in front of your students, it'll come back to bite you. What's that supposed to mean? When you're young, you had a habit of running from things you didn't like. Why, well, I recall you hating liver so much that you'd shove it onto my plate with tears in your eyes. There's a difference between not eating food you don't like and then talking to maybe people that have a different life experience for the fact of writing. Like, I don't think liver is going to help him write. What are you talking about? 
I didn't cry, nor did I force anyone else to eat it. You don't like liver, Professor? Who the fuck does, you weirdo? M moving on. I just meant that she should do her best within reason. Sure, sure. Wasn't that a nice talk away to Darlin? Yes, it was so educational. There you have it. I'm glad to hear that. Professor Sagi looked away, as if trying to hide his embarrassment. He's being kind of cute. <laughs> oh, girl. I felt a smile bubbling to the surface, so I pressed my hands to my cheeks to suppress it. I feel like he's given me more than advice. Something really special, yes, love in your heart that's blossoming now. This pleasant thought warmed my heart as I watched my mentor behave so bashfully. <laughs> Skipping! Yep! Ding! Yep. Wanted to make a poppy noise, but it didn't work the first time. Uh, I'm gonna, let's see, what's next? Back to the lesson room, I'm assuming, because that's the only choice we haven't made. See, it's black. Instead of having blue text. Oh yeah, back to the lesson room. What can I do now? Hmm, what should I do? I think I owe Professor Asagi an apology. That's priority number one. Feeling nervous, I knocked on the door to the lesson room. Oh, okay. There is a pretend time coming up with him, so I wonder if it's... Hmm. Excuse me, Professor? What are you doing here, Miss Ueda? I thought I told you to go take a break. You did, but I've been thinking about what you said and the mistakes I made today. Since this morning, I haven't been focusing on taking my work seriously. I haven't been focusing or taking my work seriously. I'm sorry. As I bowed, my mentor didn't say a word. I could feel his eyes on me. I took some time to cool off and calm down. I promise you I won't make the same mistake again. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem that way to me. My head snapped up and I met my mentor's piercing gaze. Drama music. Those are pretty words. But people don't just change instantly. Life would be much easier if we did. But, but I... Let me ask you something. Can you explain to me why you can't focus? Unless you address the cause, you can't claim to have moved past it. I... My lips pressed into a thin line. I know the reason, but I obviously can't tell him. Is your dad also my dad? Are you my big brother? I hope not, because that would make romancing him weird. Do you know the truth? There was no way I could ask such baseless questions. must be a difficult subject if you don't want to tell me. But I'm responsible for your performance here, so I can't just let this go. If you make the same mistakes again, it'll cause problems for the crew. You understand that, don't you? Yes? Professor Asagi nodded at my meek reply. Allow me to ask you again. Are you worried about your career? Your own script, or... Your relationship to someone else. It looks like it's the latter, then. No, I... I need to talk my way out of this. Oh, no, don't skip. Shit. I was trying to save because I need to talk my way out of... And this might be the pretend time? Let's see. Oh, that's true. Eh, we're gonna have to go, like, up in here. Okay. I'm gonna save here because I think the pretend time might be coming. Okay. Uh, um, it, it's school. School, you say? Maybe not, but if when we get to it, I'll save it there. But I've been worrying about someone at school, so uh, um, I think it's because of them. Well, you made mistakes at work because you were thinking about this person. Uh, yes? Hmm. Mr. Saki's eyes narrowed and he pursed his lips. Not really the problem here, but he doesn't know that. It's okay, I'm safe. Not entirely a lie, either. I put on my best poker face, and my mentor's frown eventually softened. In that case, would you mind telling me a few things about this person? Huh? I might be someone I know. Perhaps I could be some of some assistance. After all, I need you back in tip-top shape. I don't know 
why he's smiling, but I have to lie if I'm going to get out of this. This is probably where it's going to start. Yeah. I was thinking of saving there again, but it's fine. We just saved a little early. Save the game. We're not going to worry about it. I got to save somewhere else. Okay. I got the pretend time up. We're cool. Pretend time! Mission! Lie your way past Professor Asagi! At the risk of repeating myself, it seemed like you lacked concentration today. Well, this person must be bothering you considerably. How are they to you? He wants to know how I know them. I desperately tried to fictionalize the person who worried me so. They needed to seem realistic, but they couldn't resemble my mentor in the slightest. Here goes! What's your relationship to the person on your mind? I don't know them well. We're close. It's, we're close. We're rather close, I think. Is it a friend? In a way, they're more like someone I look up to than a friend. I see. So they're older. Perhaps a professional. I love that. I like, so they're older. Perhaps a professional. <laughs> I love how they did that. He was like a professional. It's a professional. A professional. Sure. Professional. Yeah. It's like he caught himself. He was like a professor. Not me. Can't be me. Love that. Or an upperclassman. Is it just me or did he almost get it? Yeah, he totally did. I love it so much. That was good. Yes, that's right. They're an upperclassman. Just barely safe. All right. Hello. Let's set their relation to you aside for a moment. What is it about this person that has you so concerned? That must be substantial if it's interfering with your job. Oh no. I saw the next answer and I'm like, this is... Okay, wait. Um, I have to think of a good answer this time. My mentor's tone was encouraging rather than demanding. Avoiding his gaze, I took a deep breath. What about them is bothering you? Something's fishy. They're... My type? Okay, so he was like, a professional. And she's like, oh my god, he almost got it. Maybe he wasn't going to think of himself, but you'd have to be wondering, like, if he was thinking of professor, he might be thinking of himself. And then you're like, they're my type. Girl! Oh! I mean, don't get me wrong. We are going to romance the pants off him, and I'm going to assume that she's... You know, they might be my type, as in, like, my same blood type, because we have the same DNA. <laughs> or genetic type. Actually, um, they might be my type. I'm a single woman in college. Of course I might have a thing for someone. Oh, huh. well, they're your type. So it's that sort of interest. And if he was thinking of himself, now he's thinking that you're interested in him. Which we probably are at this point, but, like, maybe she doesn't know it. Yes, that's it! Shall, shall I have my expect? Ahem. <clears throat> Shall I have high expectations for your next romance script, then? Oof. His smile was killer. I know, isn't it? I'm sure he meant that sincerely and wasn't taunting me. But now I feel really nervous. Now I felt really nervous, sorry. Oh, one last question. Forgive me for being blunt, but... Did you really make those mistakes today because of this person who's bothering you? What? All your answers so far have been rather dubious. Makes me wonder if you aren't hiding something else. Or someone else. Oh no. I apologize for prying. But I hope you'll pardon my old writer's habit of questioning the unknown. A writer's habit? Definitely in a pinch here, but this could be my chance to convince him. Let me think. Maybe it's time for me to throw him a curveball. Stealing my resolve, I met my mentor's probing gaze without hesitation. How will you convince your mentor? It's true. Don't you trust me? Sorry, I was kissing the bird. Professor Asagi, don't you trust me? I mustered the meekest tone I could and my mentor's lips tugged up just a little. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you feel that way. But don't worry. You're my student and I trust you. Ow, my heart. Thank you. I bowed and his expression relaxed. Well, that's enough questioning for now. I feel like I may have driven you into a corner. Finally. It was a bit harsh on you. Not 
After all, everyone makes mistakes. I hope you'll continue to give us your best, and don't let today discourage you. Remember, many people worry about you when they see you out of sorts. Myself included. Right, you're entirely right. I'm sorry, and thank you. Goodness, he accepted my explanation. Woohoo! Complete! Yay! Go us! Aren't we smat? We're wicked fucking smat. Bird, we're wicked fucking smat. Silly bird! You just sit near us, Nagy Boo. Um. Sorry. I never want to talk. I'll always be here to listen. Problems are easier to face when you aren't alone. He has a point, I suppose. Still, this problem isn't something I can just tell him about. He's directly involved. I bowed, unable to bring myself to agree to it. I'll come to you if there's something you can help me with. I'm very sorry about today. I'm gonna get the props ready for the next lesson. I'll make sure not to screw up again. I quickly said my farewell and turned to leave. I'm happy to know he's genuinely concerned, but I... I... I wasn't ready to talk about this yet. Locking my heart away with excuses, I left the lesson room behind. As I walked away, I tried my best to ignore Professor Asagi's gaze boring into my back. Good. Get to go to cooking? I want to do the cooking with him. <laughs> you know, because we do it with everybody. Oh, what's this? Okay. Okay, so this is basically, like, I kind of... Dragging us out, you've been avoiding me lately. Is there a particular reason why you can't face me? Okay, so this is all new. Interesting. N no Not really. Really, it's no big deal. Seeing that I wasn't eager to keep talking, my mentor sighed and let out a chuckle. To tell you the truth, something's been bothering me ever since the day you made those mishaps. We spoke briefly afterward, but what you said didn't add up. Your story about someone at school was questionable at best. It didn't come up again after we talked, so I assumed I was safe. We found it strange after all, then. I hung my head and squeezed my eyes shut for a moment, prepared to dig my heels in. I told you the truth. There's no other reason for my mistakes. If you think I'm avoiding you, it's only because I happen to be leaving at the same time. I'm sorry if that made you uncomfortable. Professor Asagi sighed again, then rested his chin on his interlaced fingers. Neither one of us was willing to back down. Our stalemate went on for a bit until it was Professor Asagi who broke the silence. Kanako Ahara. What? My head snapped up before I could stop myself. When her eyes locked, he smiled gently. You're finally looking me in the eye. I remembered her when I was watching the credits roll. Probably Kanako. Oh, Kanako? I don't know how to uh, properly pronounce it, but anyway. Kanako Ehara was my father's disciple, and her real name, her real surname was Ueda. Oh. When I thought back on it, I realized you've been acting strangely ever since you heard about her. I'll ask you one more time. Let's not complicate this any further. If it's something you can talk to me about, I may be able to help you solve it. His words are gentle, but he's leaving me no way out. I press my lips tight, feeling the suspense. I did it again, harder, willing everything to stay locked inside. Then, I set it free. Actually, I... I want to know who my father is. I slowly opened up to him about myself. As he mentioned, my mother was a screenwriter. She passed away when I was a child. She and my grandmother raised me, and I grew up without knowing my father. Before my grandmother passed away, she told me that my father had most likely worked on Pretend to Love. The whole reason I decided to pursue screenwriting was to learn who my father was. Kind of like, I'm only doing this to find my dad. Shouldn't you be doing this because you enjoy it, but also it helps you find your dad? You know what I mean? And... If your father took mom under his wing, they might have been close. Closer than she would have been with any other member of the crew. My mom passed away without telling me a thing. All I've had to go on is my grandma's suspicion. She must have gotten pregnant by someone on set. There weren't any other men in her life at the time. 
not, I mean, not that your grandma knows. Your mom could have been out there, like, God knows what she was doing. Like, girl, she's in charge of herself. Maybe she was just having some fun. She's allowed. Since your father was my mother's mentor, he might have helped her write the film. There's a connection. I see. So that's what this was all about. We might share the same father, which would make us siblings, which would make our love very forbidden. My mentor sighed deeply, his hands still folded tight. The relationship between a mentor and mentee is indeed a strong one, and they would have worked side by side often. And it would be really weird if this mentor and mentee were getting it on, and then we're gonna, like, like mother, like daughter, like father, like son, and like brother and sister, I guess. <laughs> Don't make it my brother game! Too attached. Right. However, my father had nothing to do with that film. Huh? When Pretend to Love was being filmed and even broadcast in Japan, he wasn't in the country. Really? But even if he wasn't involved, my mom might have... I trailed off, unable to continue. My father was the sort of man who wouldn't associate himself with a script unless he saw it with his own two eyes. I compared the dates myself, actually. When the drama was still in production, he was on a solo trip in Europe. I believe he was gone for about two years. Considering her age, he just wasn't in Japan at the right time. If memory serves, he'd already severed any such ties by the time he left the country. Well, that may have been why your mother had this opportunity to begin with. It was her chance to strike out on her own. Born from that was the film. By the time he returned to Japan, the movie was already finished had already finished airing. Well, that's the honest truth, as far as I can tell. So that's what happened. In other words, your father and my mother basically had no contact at the time? I believe that to be the case. And then you're like, oh, okay, and then, like, we fall in love, and then later we're like, he's like, actually, he came back one weekend? Oh, whoops. Well, too late, we're married now. We can't tell our kids that we're siblings. <laughs> That would just be the worst. Listen. I'm not sure. Like, if you're gonna have, like... I mean, there is, like, a little incesty kind of things going on when it's old-timey games and they're your cousin. But, like, shit like that actually happens. So you're like, it's a little weird, but now I've gotten so used to it that it doesn't bother me. And now I'm, like, daring games. Like, go ahead, give me a brother. Come on. It's creepy and gross. But, like, at the same time, like, whatever. I don't have a real brother, so it's not as weird to me as people who had a brother. But also, if I had a brother, I'd be like, you know, my brother's different than playing in a Tome game where, like, the main character is going to bone her brother. It's different, because it's not you, you know what I mean? You're like, whatever. It's kind of like the assholes, all the characters that are, like, just complete and utter trash. You're like, in these games, you love them. But in real life, you're like, hell no, I'd light them on fire like the trash they are. God, no, wouldn't put up with that. You know, like the glasses assholes that like to slam you up against shit. I love it in these games, but in real life, I'd be like, um, 911, I need some help. You know, <laughs> like the shit. But like, I'm not sure if it'd be worse if a game was like, hey, here's a route and you know it's your brother. And then you're just like, all right, we're still going to bone him anyway. Or if, like, you had that, like, oh, now we have this romantic relationship, and then you find out after the fact. At the end. Oh, and by the way, your siblings. <gasps> like, what would be more traumatic if you were playing? I feel like that would be more traumatic. Because if you were playing a game, and it was like, this is character, is your brother. You could be like, I'm not playing that route, because I'm not into that. You could make that choice. But if you didn't know until, like, you're, like, in the route, and you're in love with the character, and you're like, this is, like, the best route ever. And then they're like, and then your siblings. That bamboozle is, like, insane. I kind of feel like that. <laughs> that's some fucked up shit. Uh, why do I think of these things? Anyway. After hearing his dispassionate explanation, I felt all the strength leave my body. Bird, your toenails are so fucking sharp, digging in my neck right now. Professor Isagi's father had nothing to do with the film. He wasn't even in Japan, at, even in Japan then. I feel like we've read some of this before. Oh, okay, we have. Oh, never mind. My voice trembled, but I somehow managed to keep myself together as I apologized to my mentor and his father. Didn't we? Wait a minute. So, like, why were we worried? Wasn't he, like... It was a wash with relief that Professor Asagi and I were... Didn't we already... Because, like, some of these we did read. 
all the baseless suspicions. You know what I mean? Like, because it let us just skip a couple of those lines. So we've obviously read that before. What part did we read? See, I forgot. I forgot which one. Like, they already told you right off the bat that he's not your brother. So, like, good. But, like, it's also strange, you know? Anyway. I mean, you had to know that none of them were actually going to be our siblings. I was just concerned that they were going to be like, we're going to throw him in and you're going to find your brotherly love. And, like, you can't actually romance him. And it's like, that's fucking cold, you know? Anyway. Professor Asagi released his hands at last and smiled bitterly. Reality, unlike fiction, is never so simple. You're right. Maybe it was just my flight of fancy that a mentor and student would be that close. Mm, we're gonna have that flight of fancy. In retrospect, it all makes sense. I noticed you speaking to Nishijima and Seno often throughout the camp. You were following the threads of your parentage, were you not? Yes, I was. I'm sorry for bringing my personal issues to work. Sometimes you can't avoid that, though. I don't mind, but try not to let it affect your job. If you're too preoccupied with other matters, it'll only distract you from your duties. Yes, I'm painfully aware. Well, then I think we can leave it at that. I cup, I dipped my head in, in, defer in deference and stood up from the chair. If anything happens, come talk to me. Good night. Good night. Are we not going to have the cooking scene and then the going to the thing? You know what I mean? Like going to the festival scene with him? I stood there, lost in thought, as I listened to my mentor's retreating footsteps. Professor Asagi's father can't possibly be my father, considering the circumstances. Couldn't, but... <laughs> he couldn't, but, like, maybe he is... Professor Asagi was acting a little differently than usual. He suddenly cut the conversation short. He just told me I could talk to him any time and left before I could say anything else. I shook my head to ward off the encroaching doubt. What now, though? I haven't quite come to terms with this. I closed my eyes to try to dispel the swelling sense of suspicion within me. I like how they're like... Making it like, oh, yeah, Asagi's not your brother. But, like, is he? Oh! Wait, episode... Th it wasn't episode four right into their route? Episode three is his route. Huh. Oh, yeah. It is. Hold on a second. I want to see something. I thought episode four was when they started... I'm checking up one of the other ones. Yeah! Oh, we... Oh, okay. So his... We hop into his route a little bit sooner than we do the other ones, but okay. Cool. Um, and... Okay, I'm not seeing the... I'm just making sure I can see a save file, but I'm like, I want to make sure it's not like before a pretend time. Actually, I don't know if it tells you. It's usually just pops up. Anyway. The next day, I thought about Professor Asagi's attitude from last night, but what he said made sense. If I make any more mistakes, it'll be awkward for him. After all, he referred me. According to the other candidates, this audition camp could completely change their lives. I can't make the same kind of mistake. I should focus on the task at hand. I often went out to get supplies as requested, but it was important to be proactive. And so I started taking requests when I had free time. I saw someone I recognized and ran up to talk to him. Oh, Mr. Hanai! Mr. Cameraman! If there's anything you need, I can go and get it for you. You sure are considerate, little missy. Actually, my throat's been acting up on me. Oh, are you okay, Mr. Hanai? It was getting hot, so I slept with the AC blasting. Not such a good idea in retrospect. Really? My AC's blasting all the time. Come on. It's like, I got wet, therefore I have a cold. Not how it works. Uh, it's been getting pretty stuffy lately. For now, can you give me some cough drops? Lemon-flavored ones, please. Sure, cough drops. Lemon for Mr. Hanai. I jotted it down so I wouldn't forget, then turned to the cameraman. What about you? Is there anything you need, Mr. Cameraman? It's not a high priority, but if you see it, could you give me some sparkling water? They only have regular at the stores here. Sparkling water. Got it. I'll go look for it. We need to get some more plastic tape, too. Okay, I think they sell that at the home improvement store nearby. Anything else? 
Five plastic tapes, three adhesive tapes, and red pens. I talked to other staff members, too, and took notes of what was needed so I didn't forget. All right, time to go shopping. What? Bird? Bird? It's not a bug. It's just that nail. You keep seeing that and freaking out. Like, it's fine. Stop it. Hey, can you get me something, too? Me, too. I need some things as well. Right when I was about to leave, some of the others there for the audition approached me. Everyone's busy with acting lessons from here on out. Sure, what do you need? A toothbrush, a compact one with four rows of bristles. Oh, and soft strength. I need a premium moisturizing shampoo, please. My hair's dry from stress. Give me just a minute. I'm writing it down so I don't forget. If they were this particular about it, I needed to make sure I got the right thing. I quickly jotted it all down. I was just thinking I need some extra strength sunscreen. Buy it for me, yeah? Oh, me too! One that has a cooling effect. And bug spray! Oh, sure, um... I keep adding more, so I can't write it all down. Um, excuse me, could you repeat that? Really? Come on, we're busy. Don't make me say it again. I'll be like, then you're not getting it, because I'm trying to write it down. Either fucking repeat yourself or you don't get your shit. S sorry. I went and got the supplies myself, and they could use this time to prepare for the auditions. That was what I thought, at least, but they were speaking too fast. Um, if you need multiple things, could you write it down for me? It would really help. But isn't this your job? You need to do it better. Right. Sorry. When they pointed out it was my job, there was nothing I could say. You're like, then I need you to slow it down or you're not getting your shit. I tried to confirm with them one more time, so I didn't buy the wrong thing. Then I felt someone behind me. <gasps> it's gonna be a soggy. Clean outside is miserable. Yet you're making a girl run your errands. You're all terrible. Actually, it sounds like something Sena would say, but I'm assuming it's a soggy because it's his route. Oh no, it is Sena. Damn it! Wow, damn, you know, I would assumed it was a soggy because it's his route, but yeah, it absolutely sounds like something Sena would say. So, I mean, I was half right. I had a 50-50 chance there with the two characters. Anyway. The heat you know, outside is miserable. You're making a girl run your errands. You're all terrible. It absolutely sounds like something he would say, though, so. I give myself a half a point for that. I, the wrong voice, but kind of. Kinda, kinda was there, or kinda, kinda guessed right. Zena, Luida, you don't gotta go shopping for us. It's not like our legs are broken. Besides, we get breaks so we can buy our own stuff during then. During then, that sounds. That phrasing is so weird. Zena, thanks for being so considerate. Huh? You, you models are always troublemakers. Right when I was thanking Zena, someone interrupted, sounding irritated. Your main job is modeling, right? I always thought this, but don't you think you're in the wrong place? Exactly. You might be an okay actor, but your agency probably got you in there. In here. Our lives depend on this. If you think this audition is some kind of game, then you're nothing but trouble. Now that everyone here is serious about this, but the way they're talking to him... I can't help it if you think that way. I know I don't fit in. Huh? Sena was always light-hearted, and I wasn't sure what he thought about the audition. But even I, an amateur, could tell he was serious. I was sure he had his own philosophy on acting. But, oh, but should he be admitting that in front of all the people here? Oh, so you're not going to deny it? Seems like your confidence is only for show. Ha! You got that right! They were prepared for a fight, looking for any excuse. But all they got was agreement, so they started laughing at him. They were getting carried away, and I couldn't stand it anymore. Please wait. I turned to the three candidates, and they glared at me. Ugh, they're scary, but... Saint is a famous model, but that's no reason to be so divisive. Huh? What's your problem? What's it to you? I'm part of the staff, so I've seen everyone from the start. I also watched the lessons during camp. Everyone here is serious about their roles. You may be rivals, but you're both passionate... Anyone can audition regardless of their background. If it's just about past achievements, then Sena has plenty. What? But that's why everyone here was selected based purely on their abilities. And here you are, singling out and insulting a peer. Makes me question your humanity. Wait a... Oof, I told them. I'd just gone with the flow and said what I thought. 
I slowly looked up to gauge their reactions. The fact were you saying it while staring at the floor? Because that takes away from it. You gotta glare at them. Why do we have to listen to you? You may be a staff member, but you barely do anything here. I knew they'd be mad. I should apologize for going overboard. No, not if they're gonna be dicks. Well, isn't everyone full of energy this morning? I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume it's a soggy now. The whole situation was like a powder keg waiting to explode. But a clear voice pierced through the tension. Oh god, no, it's fucking Nishijima. I can't, I can't, I don't know anymore. I'm waiting for Asagi to fucking show up because, like, it's his route now. And yet, it's everyone else. That time, at least, I didn't have a guess of any, but it being anyone else. Okay, in my head, I was like, it's probably not Asagi just because I assume it is. And I'm waiting for him and I'm gonna be like, oh, this is probably so-and-so. And -and it's gonna be Asagi then. Whatever. So, Nishijima. You should go to the lesson room if you don't want to be tardy. Everyone else is already there. Before we knew it, Nishijima was standing next to us, smiling. But there's something in those eyes. <laughs> that was enough to alter the atmosphere completely. It seemed everyone had a lot of respect for Nishijima. Much to my relief, their animosity dispersed. Nishijima, I envy you. You don't even need to audition. The role is practically yours. Whoops. I'm sure you don't even notice amateurs like us. I notice because I notice who I, whose back I can step on. I'm just kidding. That's a terrible thing to say. I've never thought that. Not in the slightest. Conceit and envy will only reduce the quality of your acting. And don't you realize that? Shijima's words gave me a glimpse of how strict he was as an actor. Everyone went silent, overwhelmed by the pressure, and the atmosphere turned awkward. It's so funny, because now we're just back to seeing that original side, like he's a serious actor, instead of being like, I just want to paint pretty backdrops. Like, so cute. You kind of forget that about him. Then someone broke the silence. Is it going to be a soggy this time? Well, I don't know why he'd be saying, hey. Now I want to be, it's Kazuma. Or, or Hanai. Hey! It's Asagi this time, isn't it? No, okay, it's Kazuma. Hey! <laughs> I'll give myself two out of three. Because the hey, I'm like, Asagi wouldn't say hey, but Hanai or Kazuma, yeah, okay. Speezy, there you are. What's going on? Why is everyone so quiet? I can't read the room. I turned to Makino, who came in behind Kazuma. Two you seem to be in a hurry. Is everything Okay. And I told me that you were going out for supplies, so I was looking for you. And since we're a trio, we can't let you do all the work. Oh, okay. Well, here's what I have. That paper, your shopping list. Let me see. Sorry, bird. Okay. Makino took my memo and scanned the list. Hmm. Well, besides Hanai and the cameraman, are the rest of the items for these people? It's fine if it's on our own on our way, but if we have to shop for the audition candidates too, there'll be no end to it. Well, well, you're the one that asked if we needed anything. Yeah, it's not like we're forcing her to shop for us. I was about to run off for supplies anyway, and I thought if I went for them, they could focus a little more on the lessons. Huh? Eh? Uh. That's not a reason for you to take on so much by yourself. We're not odd-jobbing it here. I'm not saying that helping them with their errands is bad, but this list is excessive. Don't you think you were getting a little carried away? <laughs> Fuck, Cosma's angry face is horrible. No, no, let's all move on. If we waste any more time, her sweet gesture to give you more time will go unappreciated. Well, we all could use more experience, so let's work hard at it, yeah? F fine. <laughs> let's go. Sorry about everything. After the others joined in, the candidates calmed down. They left the lesson room looking embarrassed, as they should. Aww, I wanted to swoop in and rescue Ueda. Winner takes all. If you guys keep showing up, I won't get my time to shine. Huh? You were trying to help her too, Sina? Of course. When the princess is in danger, I have to come to save the day. Or at least I tried to, but she defended me instead. I didn't really do anything. Still, I thought my chance had come. But then you swooped in, Nishijima, and took all the credit. I wasn't trying to save her or anything. I merely did what was right. But it was impressive. And don't you agree, babe? I do. 
This might not be the best way to say it, but knowing that someone like you, Nishijima, knowing you're taking the audition so seriously is, well, you're just a great person. I fucking love it. We're like, you're just great. And you're exaggerating. I'd say you're greater. Oh my god, is this the harem route? Because this is what it feels like. Huh? It must have been scary to face those men head on so defiantly. No, I was kind of harsh. I should apologize later. Uh, what the hell did you say? You weren't saying it for you. You were upset about what they said to Sena. Y you were listening? Only halfway through, but you did raise your voice, so I just overheard it. This is so embarrassing. Yeah, I certainly felt Ueda's love. L love? What's that supposed to mean? Details, please! This is all a misunderstanding! Oh, Sena, Nishijima, isn't it about time you got moving? Nishijima pulled out his phone to check, then nodded. Right, we should be more aware of the time. I can't be late after all. Hey, yeah, let's get going. Um, thank you both for earlier. Good luck with your lessons. Oh, nice! Oh, my sweetie is cheering me on. I'm rooting for you, too. Yeah, thanks. Just like a loyal dog. Hey! What's that supposed to mean? Oh, yeah, Ueda. Hmm? I don't worry too much about those guys from earlier. And they're just irritable right now. And the auditions are ending, so anyone would be anxious and afraid. I'm sure you guys know them better than I do, though. Sena winked and waved as he and Nishijima left for the lesson. I watched them go. Afraid, huh? Those three, it's their first time. Yeah, and unlike those who are already in show business, this camp will decide how they move forward. I'm sure they're worried about it. True. They're usually nicer and friendlier. They're so afraid of failing that they put on an act to mask their anxiety. I can see how they'd end up taking it out on others. I can too. Anyway, remember what Sena said earlier? It sounded like he'd looked, up, looked us up or something. Sena acts all innocent, but he's got his ear to the ground. I think I know what you mean. He seems close with the other staff. That goes for you, too. Huh? You're not one to start conversations often, but everyone likes you. Earlier, it was more that I just happened to be there. Well, for now, let's go get the supplies that I asked for. Okay. Perfect place to end it. Because I gotta get the bird a break. I need one, too. Anyway, so I will wrap this up here, and we will continue Asagi's route without Asagi next time. <laughs> <laughs> See if we guess magic people who are appearing. Maybe this time it'll be him when a magic voice appears and we have no idea who it is. Anyway, I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.